What's up riders, Old Man Roden here and welcome back to the channel. We're just now leaving beautiful Maysville, Kentucky. We're going to be crossing the Ohio River here in just a short short and uh, we're going to talk about how the Meteor 350 did on a group ride in the fog <laughs> and uh, multiple states. Well, multiple meetings too. Tell you what, it's going to be a great video guys and if you haven't checked out our latest video, make sure you do. Stay tuned. And it's going to be a beautiful day today, guys. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we got some fog right now on the river, but I mean, that's kind of an everyday thing, you know what I mean? Kind of like out in California where you get that gloom come rolling in. It's kind of the same kind of thing, if you guys want to know. But uh, we're, uh, we're going to head back. Uh, hey, Google Lady just told me, welcome to Ohio. I'm using the Google Lady today to compare it with the Kalimoto that I did uh, yesterday or during the Ronin ride. And I kind of want to see which is one. I don't say it's better, but which is more friendly. I really thought the Kalimoto did a fantastic job. Also in this video, we want to talk about how well the, the uh, Meteor performed on the back roads uh, in some of the hilly country of the southern part of the route that we had, and also how it performed as far as a, uh, a motorcycle for a long distance trip uh, loaded up. The, uh, we had the long gear stuff all loaded up and, uh, you know, camera equipment and clothes and, you know, all the accoutrement. Hey, I said it right again. All the accoutrement for a longer distance trip. And I'll tell you, the, uh, the Meteor does a great job. Now, this was only 170 some miles uh, that we uh, put on the bike yesterday. But for a lot of folks, when I've been, you know, to most of our, uh, not most of our, a lot of our group, uh, that was the longest ride they had this year. And uh, we were really tickled with it. Because, you know, you never know the experience level of folks. And, and our guys were, they performed flawlessly. I was really tickled with that. This is going to be a beautiful route as well, too. We, uh, we really get a kick out of uh, this southern Ohio. In this part, we're kind of towards the western part of Ohio, which uh, right along the river is the only place there's any hills. Uh, you get a little north, it gets kind of flatty. And uh, so we're, uh, we're uh, riding, uh, actually heading northeast, heading back home. One of the cool things about this uh, helmet, and a lot of helmets do it, but the, uh, the Zox uh, Zenith helmet has the drop-down shield, and it, it actually, I think, is better than most of the drop-down shields that I've used in my life. It's uh, super clear, uh, except, well, it's smoked, tinted, but it's super clear that you can see through it, because actually, in reality, and I'm going to lift the uh, main visor up once here, and uh, I'm getting a little whistle there, so I'm not going to keep it up very long, but uh, in a foggy day like today, this is a, it's a between using the, the sunny and the semi-fog, uh, and I think it's going to work really well. So if you guys haven't tried the Zox Zenith, I know it's a Canadian company, but you can get it through Revzilla. And uh, I think it's going to be a good addition to, uh, to your motorcycle kit. So Ronan, old man Ronan approved, guys. I really enjoy the helmet. <laughs> Let me start by saying that the... Uh, the Meteor 350 had remarkable fuel economy. I was getting 87 miles a gallon on the bike with me and it loaded down with all my gear. Now, I don't carry a tremendous amount of clothes and stuff like that, but for doing these videos, I got to carry camera equipment and I'm running three different GoPros plus the Insta360, which you'll see, you'll see in the other bike. I didn't put it on this morning because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit faster pace than what I did uh, uh, in the Ronin ride. Uh, and that, and you know, we're uh, we're gonna, we're trying to get home quicker. I mean, I should be home by. Well, it's going to take me about uh, three hours to get home, which is to me not a big ride, but for a lot of folks it is. And uh, this bike did remarkably well. Uh, I didn't get any stretch in the chain. I was pretty tickled with that, which I didn't expect it anyways. But uh, you know, a lot of times when you're running hard. Uh, the big test is when I get home after it'll be several, you know, 300 and some miles after that, almost 400. And the big test will be, you know, the, if it used any oil. The big test will be, well, if it uh, the, the chain stretch. You know, we were on chip and seal for a little bit of the ride, and that's really hard on, on street tires anyway. So we'll check the tires. We'll check the tire pressure. We'll go over the whole thing. And we'll do that at the end of this video. So make sure that you stay tuned to the very end. So we'll, after we get done talking about it, we're going to give you a, a walk around and also a, uh, an in-depth review of how well that the... Uh, the uh, Media 350 performed as far as on a maintenance type thing, and uh, but as far as a riding type thing, <laughs> I 
but the Meteor, man, as far as comfortability, I, uh, I have a stock seat on this, uh, and I'll tell you, I had absolutely no issue. And uh, it's, I think it's one of the strong suits of this motorcycle. Now, I know that you can't say that across all lines. A lot of guys want to have uh, either super plush or super hard, and that's cool, that's up to you. But for old man Ronan, this seat did remarkable, and I would probably not ever put another seat on it. And I mean, I've got, well, a bunch of thousands of miles on this bike uh, riding it, so it has had the opportunity to break down a lot. And I find it as as comfortable, if not more comfortable now than when I first got the bike. Uh, but of course, it had well over 500 miles on it when I first got it. So, But this bike here, as far as the comfortability and the ease of ride, was, well, it's a cruiser style with the mid forward controls and I was super comfortable. As far as butter smooth on the engine man I'll tell you the uh, I, I'm gonna borrow a line from traveling Robin. Let me tell you the uh, this bike there was virtually no vibration in the handlebars, virtually no vibration in the seat, virtually no vibration in the uh, in the foot pegs, even up at 55, 60, 65 miles an hour. I did tap 70 a couple times, trying to uh, get the boys to jump their speed a little bit. Uh, but we did that just to, like I say, I wanted them, hey, catch up. That way we could uh, tighten them up. Then I slowed back down, but this bike, it, it just is butter. It's a single, and it's still buttery smooth. And I think that's a big factor when you're talking about motorcycles that can do cruising. And a lot of, uh, a lot of single cylinders aren't that way. Uh, but this bike here is butter smooth, and like I said, whether you get the classic or if you're over in Europe and you get the new, uh, or in India, and you get the new Hunter, I, gu I will guarantee you this, that that J-Series engine is going to be one of the best engines you've ever ridden. And I, and I ride this bike probably primarily more than any other, this in the Himalayan. And, and to be honest with you, this engine is my favorite of all the singles I've ever ridden in my entire life simply because the way it performs. It, uh, it performs great uh, up to its limitations, obviously, but there's no vibration, and there's, there's, I mean, it just does what you ask it to do. So as far as how the bike performed on the trip, as far as engine-wise, it was near perfect. <laughs> well, guys, I wanted to show you uh, one of the Southern Ohio gems of, uh, you're talking about four lanes. This is the Appalachian Highway. Uh, Route 32 and uh, I decided to take part of it on the way home. We only got a few more miles on it But I wanted to show you uh, some of the beautiful scenery we have if, if you're stuck on four lanes <laughs> I mean, this is not one of my favorite roads. However, as far as a four lane, it is one of my favorite roads it uh, this and uh, The southern part of 77 van is just absolutely stunningly beautiful so you can tell but uh we got some great places here in Ohio to be uh, traveling, and I just wanted to show it to you a little bit because it is such a cool, cool highway. I made it, <laughs> and we just uh, jumped a little bit ahead in time uh, uh, f during the middle of this video. And this video is really uh, a, a video on how well these little 350 engines do on a uh, on a long distance tour. Now, the tour we went on, as far as the uh, the ride, the actual Ronin ride itself, was one way, just under 150 miles. And uh, we spent the night overnight down in. Uh, I spent it in Maysville, Kentucky. Other pe people stayed in the various places, but. It was a uh, it was a great experience. Uh, now I've done other long distance trips, but I didn't film them. Well, I did, but my uh, GoPro, as you know, how well I love GoPro cameras, but they're the only ones that really work, uh, had ma massive failures. I lost all my footage on my trip down to to Virginia. However. With that said, that's another day, because you know what? What that makes me going to do is go back again. We're going to make another trip to uh, Virginia here in the uh, in the future. But this trip here in particular uh, was 150 miles, just under one way. Uh, my total trip was uh, well over 350 miles uh, because I came back a different direction. 
and uh, uh, had some really good time. You, after you're going to see it in this video here of how I came back on the Appalachian Highway, which was beautiful. And I was running, as you can see, 65, almost 70 miles an hour most of the way on that highway and uh, did remarkable. And of course, it had slow up and downs. I'm not saying it's like the West Virginia Turnpike, but I'm telling you, it is a uh, hilly ride on the uh, on the uh, Appalachian Highway and uh, really enjoyed that on my way back. Even though I really don't like to do highways, I wanted to show you guys in this particular video how well this motorcycle will do in a long distance tour. And part of it is the equipment that I have on it. We're starting with the fly screen. This, uh, this fly screen directs the wind up and it really protects not only my, my camera equipment, which is the main reason I got it, my phone and my camera equipment, from rain elements, bugs, the whole nine yards. And I think that's the big factor for me. And I think it looks cool too. Uh, as far as practicality, ah, eh, you know, uh, the bigger windscreen would be better for folks that don't like the, the wind in their face. I love it, that's the, what I do. I did this more for looks, and uh, and also to protect the uh, the uh, the gauges uh, or as you guys over in uh, Europe call them the the uh, the clocks. So I did it for that more than anything else. Uh, that was the first thing. But the main thing is these long ride bags. And let me grab the camera and show you what I'm talking about. Now I chose to use the large long ride duffel for this particular trip because not only just, it only, I only had a little bit of clothes in it, but my camera equipment, and I'll tell you, that's the biggest thing for me traveling, is carrying enough stuff, extra batteries, charging equipment, my cameras, uh, obviously stuff for the 360, for the GoPros, I carry three GoPros, and all the accoutrement that goes with it. Uh, that is a, a factor. Now of a multiple trip, I'll show you in the future here, uh, we'll actually later here in this video what I do for longer trips and what I would uh, actually use the small duffel in conjunction with the large duffel and you'll see here in a second but uh, the saddlebags held all my uh, really important things like hydration water uh, it carried my air moto uh, for a air pump it carried a, a first aid kit just in one side it uh, it carried uh, uh, the uh, uh, a tire repair kit. Uh, it carried the locks that I put on the bike at night if I'm staying in a hotel. Uh, on this side over here, it carried uh, uh, my rain suit and anything else that I needed. Uh, I, I think I, I, my hat, things like that. Uh, a small uh, t-shirt that I could put underneath my jacket if I needed to warm up a little bit. Stuff like that, long sleeve sleep t-shirt. Uh, things like that to keep in my, a knife in case I needed it. Uh, you know, extra parts if I need them, like a little bit of oil that I carried with me as well too. So any of that stuff went in the saddlebags. Up here, it was clothes, it was camera equipment, and I'll tell you, with all the stuff that I carry for camera equipment, it really, really, really was a beneficial to have this large duffel. When I first got the long ride stuff, I, I got this, the small one, and I said, man, I think, you know, I really need the larger one too. But what if I go on a multi-day trip? What would I take? Well, as you can see, uh, I was able to attach the long ride uh, uh, small duffel on top of the large duffel, and it gives you, well, not twice as much, but three, uh, what, one and a half times as much uh, storage space as what you had with just the large duffel itself. And I always carry the, uh, the lighter, smaller stuff at the top and more of the heavy stuff in the middle and definitely in the bottom, the things that uh, are going to carry the weight. So it's actually like somebody sitting on the back of the bike with you. It's not overwhelming. And you know, we ride these things two up a lot, Iron Lady and I, just because we, we love to ride together sometimes. And uh, this gives us the ability to snap it to, uh, and I'll show you here in a minute, the little clips that you get from Long Ride that offers like little tiny uh, uh, C rings or O rings, and you can attach them down there, and uh, it makes it uh, makes it very very secure. And while you're riding, which makes it even more fun is it gives you kind of like a little backrest there. And uh, you know, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about when I was doing my trip, uh, that I was able to lean back against the large duffel and uh, give myself just a little bit of support. And uh, that makes a big difference on a long trip. Another thing that was really beneficial, and I'll show you right here. These extra wide, I call them mini floorboards, but they're the wide pegs, really gave my boot a uh, good, I mean, good purchase. I was able to move my foot around quite a bit with this, uh, and that way it gave me the ability to uh, 
you know, not only change positions, but also, it, it, I'm telling you, I, I being an, a Harley guy, I love floorboards on cruising style bikes, and these, I call them mini floorboards because they did a fantastic job. And when I was doing the heel toe shifter, it's perfect. And I know I know a lot of you guys don't like heel toe shifters, but daggone it, learn how to ride. If you're gonna go long time, the long term cruising, these things are fantastic. You just simply just rock your foot back and forth, and it's baby easy peasy and I really really encourage you if you have never tried it learn to ride with uh, mini floorboards or floorboards because in the uh, in the uh, teal, heel toe shifter because it is well well worth it without question well let's move on to something else well guys as far as the chain I got virtually no stretch out of it at all uh, and the sprocket is in really really good shape which is something I check uh, you know pretty much every time I will be doing a service on the chain here in the next day or two to make sure that I have uh, it lubricated well cleaned and lubricated that way for the next trip that I do it'll be ready to go as far as oil I used virtually no oil on the entire trip and again was it a lot of mileage? No, but I run hard. Uh, I run them like they're supposed to be ridden. I run them through the rev range. Uh, I make sure that I get peak performance out of them. I make sure that everything is working proper. And when I get back from a trip, I do my uh, after action report on the motorcycle to make sure everything is working fine. If I need to do many repairs, any many tightenings or things like that, that's when I do it. Ready for the next trip. I don't waste around. Now, I literally just got in and changed clothes like I mentioned earlier. So this thing hasn't been washed or prepped or anything else. The only thing I added to it was I put the uh, small duffel on top just to show you guys. But what else do we find out on this trip? Well, were there any issues? Well, there were two, actually three. Uh, none of them referred to the bike. The bike performed flawlessly. Uh, but the one issue was with the uh, with me <laughs> using the Kalimoto map. Uh, I literally uh, uh, was talking to uh, Chad in the back. I, 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 I linked two guys on the trip, one in the very back being Chad. He was from Michigan. And the other was Andy. He's a local guy here. He's a really good friend of the channel and a really good friend of mine as well, too. Uh, both of them are really good friends of mine uh, and really big supporters of the channel. And I owe them a tremendous amount. And I want to send a special thanks and, and shout out to Andy plant and Chad Zimmerman. You guys were the best and I really mean that. I uh, value you as writers but more important than that I value you as friends. However, I was chewing the fat with them and telling them hey you know every time I would get a turn on the map making sure that their maps were saying exactly the same thing because this was really the first time we used the Kalimoto app as a uh, 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 as a route planner for a trip. So I wanted to make sure that uh, we were all staying in, in tune. Uh, and so we didn't have, uh, Andy had a little issue with his, but uh, Chad and I did not. So we were, uh, but he was running the free version. So there may be an issue there. I don't know. Chad and I both had the paid version. So there may be something there that if you're going to actually download the map, go ahead and get the paid version because it's well worth it. Uh, one thing also is, is guys that had the Kalimoto map and they were out of state, uh, they couldn't link up to our map uh, because you have to be in that state, which is, I think is wrong, but we can talk to Kalamoto about that down the road. Uh, but I made, a, I made a mistake by being talking to them, just like I do a lot, I talk a lot, and uh, I missed a turn. <laughs> so that was a faux pas on my part. The other factor was that uh, the Insta360 camera kept sliding down. In fact, when I had it extended like this to get some good views, it kept pulling backwards because the, uh, what, the, what they give you as far as for a motorcycle uh, clamp, which is similar to the one I have on the front here, and I did take that one off, uh, is uh, it, it slides back. It's made for at least a 7 8 inch bar instead of uh, the small half inch bars that are on most of the, uh, you know, most of the racks that you put on your motorcycle. And that's where you're actually putting things on uh, as far as for me is on these smaller racks. And you need something that will tighten up a little bit better. And just putting rubber on it uh, does nothing. It'll still f slide. So I have to figure something out. I just don't know how to do that yet. But those were the two major faux pas other than a typical GoPro issue, which is battery failure. And when we got to 505, uh, it, uh, it literally quit halfway down. So I missed riding up to the ferry, which really irritated me. But it was literally within 10, 15 minutes of our, uh, our end trip. And on the 505, you do not want to stop, especially when you got 15, 20 guys with you, because uh, it's so curvy a road there, or so twisty a road there, that it would be dangerous to pull over. So I said, well, Thank you, GoPro. You screwed me again. No! <laughs> but uh, that was really the only issues. As far as this bike uh, performing, it was flawless. 
Well, after this trip and my trip to Virginia, I'm gonna make this statement. This is a true long distance touring bike. You can go anywhere on it, and you're gonna do it extremely efficiently. Like I said, I averaged over 87 miles a gallon. Uh, my chain didn't stretch, I didn't use any oil. I ran it hard. I always run uh, motorcycles hard anyways. I don't abuse them, but I use them. Uh, I was able to use my quad lock here to have the navigation with the Kalimoto, and it went flawlessly, other than my mistake <laughs> we learned about earlier. Uh, but in reality, uh, I, would, I would easily take this uh, bike across country. Now, you have to understand it is a 350, and in certain circumstances in, uh, in some uh, secondary roads where you're going to have a really sharp uh, incline, you will have to downshift. Just realize that that's part of the deal. But as far as uh, cruising, the way that I got this bike set up, man, I would, and again, you guys know that I've been on some really long distance trips up to Alaska, down to Mexico, all over the U.S. over my lifetime, and I have to admit that this is one of the best motorcycles I've ever gone long distance on. You know, we've traveled to Virginia, we've traveled, uh, Aaron later and I have done a couple 500 mile trips that uh, we make little videos out of and we didn't film the entire thing because, you know, GoPro batteries. Uh, but uh, the reality of it is, this is the one that we really, this trip here, the Ronin ride was one that really cemented my thoughts and feelings into how well this bike does on long trips. Well, let's go back in time. That's right guys, it's time for another Max Eyewear motorcycle specific sunglass giveaway from Old Man Ronin. All you have to do is be a subscriber, make a comment below on this video of what time you saw Little Ronin roll by, and send me an email to oldmanronin at gmail.com and you're entered for this month's giveaway. Welcome back in time. <laughs> I know, right? We, uh, we took a jump forward there a little bit to show you uh, uh, some of the results and how the bike looked as far as a walk around and how she performed. But it really is a fantastic motorcycle. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification button. Share and comment. You know, I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. Until next time, guys, ride safe and keep her on two wheels, baby.